Welcome back, everybody, to part seven, the final part of our Unity Balloon Rider tutorial series. In this video, let's wrap up our project by adding a score manager that will give us the ability to pick up points when popping a balloon and scoring points over time. So before we begin, as always, link in the description for you to download this project and follow along. And when everyone is ready, let's crack on. First, let's go to the main camera, click the drop down, and let's go to our canvas. Inside the canvas, we of course have our game over screen. We also have a title screen that's inactive and two pieces of text. We have our score and high score. We want our score value to increase over time, the longer we survive in game, and we want to add to this value when we collect a points pickup, which will be our balloon. Then we want to save our score as our high score upon death. So in order to do this, we need to create a score manager. In the canvas, right click, create empty, place the new object above score so it's nice and tidy, call it score manager, then go ahead and open up the score manager script. First things first, because we're using UI elements in the canvas, if you haven't already, do make sure that you've added using Unity Engine.UI at the top there. For the variables, the first two we want are those texts. So we'll create public text, score text, and high score text. We want each to have a value. So we'll have a public float, score count, high score count. We also want a value for our points per second. So we'll create a public float for that, public float points per second. And we also want to control when we can and can't score points. We only want to score points when the game is active and we don't want to score points once the player has struck an object or is eaten by the fish. So we'll select a public ball simply called score active. In the start method, the first thing we want to do when we boot up and play the game is access our high score value from our previous sessions. This will be saved in player prefs, which is a really handy way to store data between game sessions. So for that, we'll use an if statement and we'll say if player prefs dot has key and this key will be called high score which we will set in the update in a moment. Then our high score count will equal that value that has been saved. So we'll then say player prefs dot get float, get that value high score. Then let's go to update and apply the values we want for our score text and high score text. And we'll do that as follows score text dot text equal then inside the quotation marks, how we want it to appear in the canvas, we'll say score colon, then a space. What appears in that space will be the value for our score, which will be represented by mathf.round. Round basically rounds it up to the nearest integer, nearest whole number, and that will be our score count, of course. So our score plus mathf.round score count and the exact same thing again but this time for our high score high score text.text .text. name it whatever you like i've named it top colon space plus mathf.round high score count next once we've started the game and we've taken off from the platform we want score active to be true and when score active is true only then will we score points over time? So underneath, we'll say if score active, then in the brackets, our score count plus equal points per second multiplied by time dot delta time. We also want to update any new high score we achieve. So underneath, create another if statement. Here we'll say if our score count, so our current score, is greater than our high score count from our previous session, then our high score count 
will become equal to our score count. We also want to save that value as well. And this is where we set that key, high score. So playerprefs.setfloat, high score. And that, of course, will be equal to our high score count. So that's how we can save and update our high score every session. OK, that's all we need for increasing points over time and handling high score. But what about when we want to add points via point pickups? For that, we can create a very handy, simple function, public void add score. The score to add will be an integer. This score to add value will be held by the points bonus or points pickup object we collide with. When we do collide with it, we want to add that score to our score count. So inside score count plus equal the value of the score we want to add. And that's all we need for the score manager. So hit save, head back into Unity. Let's attach the script to the score manager and let's fill out the elements in the inspector. So where is asking for score text and high score text, simply drag and drop the appropriate text elements in there like so. Score count and high score count will leave as zero. They will accumulate as we play the game. As for points per second, you can choose the value here. I'm gonna go with 10. Now let's go ahead and get this all set up in the game manager script. Underneath our public game object for game over screen, let's add our public score manager score man. While we're at it, let's add another game object to this variable. Just after game over screen, let's add title screen as well. We'll add that to our project in a moment. Next, let's go to the game start method. When we start the game, we want to be able to start scoring points. So score manager dot score active equals true. We also want to get rid of whatever title screen we have in place. Therefore, title screen dot set active is false. When the player collides with a hazard, we want to stop the score from increasing. So in the update function, we'll create an if statement that says if player dot is dead, then score manager dot score active is false. After game over, we also want to reset the score when we restart the game. So we'll go to our reset function underneath and we'll simply say that the score man dot score count equals zero F. So this will reset the score back to zero when we restart the game. Okay, hit save. Let's head back into Unity. Let's add the score manager into our game manager like so. It's also asking for the title screen and you'll see we have a title screen that's currently inactive. Set it as active, press to fly, nice and simple. Back to the game manager, drag it in there like so. And when you're ready, have a play test. You can see we have a score of zero, a top score of zero. It's asking us to press to fly. So let's press and away we go. So now the longer we play, our score will continue to increase. You can see the top score is also increasing to match our current score. Let's see if everything works when we reset. Hit some spikes. There we go. Top score saved as 150. I'm going to hit retry. And there we go. Top score has been saved and our score has been reset back to zero. Ready to go again. Excellent. Now that our score system is all ready, let's go and add some simple point pickups for a bit of extra fun. In the prefabs folder, you'll see we have an object called point balloon. Double click and take a closer look. All it is, is a simple balloon sprite with a circle collider 2D shape to fit. Let's make sure this is a trigger as we do want to collide with it. When we collide with it, we are going to instantiate this object here, orange pop, to create a very simple popping effect. So let's go back into our scene and drag a point balloon into it, and then open up in our scripts folder, our points on collision script. Let's keep it simple with only a few variables. The first will be the public int, points to give. How many points do we want to score when we pop the balloon? 
that game object orange pop so we'll create a public game object pop and we also want to access the score manager of course in the start method let's make a reference to the score manager score man equals find object of type score manager next let's remove void update and replace it with a private void on trigger enter 2d collider 2d other inside we'll say if the other dot game object dot tag equals player then what do we want to happen well we want to add points to give to the score manager to our score score manager dot add score points to give we also want to set the balloon as inactive so game object dot set active false at the same time we're going to instantiate a variable called popped and that will equal instantiate the pop sprites that will be our game object in the transform dot position and transform dot rotation of where the balloon is then we'll quickly destroy the popped sprite after a very 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 short time so destroy inside the brackets our pop variable and i've gone for a float of 0.05f all right hit save let's head back into unity let's add the points on collision script and the object destroyer script to the balloon we still want it to behave similarly to our hazards let's also add that sprite that prefab of orange pop in there like so how many points do you want your balloon to give i'm going to give it a value of 100. let's go to overrides and apply all the changes to update the prefab we no longer need this balloon in our scene now it's been updated so go ahead and delete it then let's create an object pool for our balloon prefab so in your object pools duplicate anyone you like rename it point balloons how often do i want my balloons to spawn i'm going to have a higher pooled amount i'll go with four in the prefabs folder add your point balloon into your balloon object pool then before we go ahead and play test do make sure to add this new point balloon pool into the object pools in the object generator simply drag it above where it says the object pools you'll see a little box with a plus symbol inside just release and it'll automatically add it to the array so go ahead hit play now when we play through the game we should eventually see some orange point balloons appear there's one right there let's pick it up great we can see the popping effect and 100 has been added to our score fantastic and there we go we have created a simple endless flyer inspired by the nes famicom classic bloom fight i really hope you enjoyed this series as much as i did making it thank you all very much for watching and joining me you can be as creative as you like with this and expand on it in your own imaginative ways if you have any suggestions for future tutorials please do let us know in the comments or at any of our other socials on twitter or instagram until next time take care have fun and i will see you soon